In this video, I will show you how to use AstroPrint Cloud with OctoPrint to control your printer from anywhere and we're starting right now. In the last few episodes of this OctoPrint series, I talked about why OctoPrint is a good choice for remotely controlling your 3D printer, but I also said that doing this over the public internet is not a recommended way, but just opening ports on your firewall. Besides that, you might not even have a publicly accessible IP address at all. I am actually paying an extra fee every month to have a public IP address on my DSL connection. But there is alternatives that don't need that. Today I would like to talk about how you can easily connect to your Octoprint server over the internet using AstroPrint in just a few clicks. And the best of it, it's free to use for up to two 3D printers, so let's dive in. But before we start, I want to send a big thank you to my patrons who are supporting me and I've rarely mentioned that in my videos, so thank you guys. I really appreciate you helping me to run this channel. Now what is AstroPrint? First, there is the AstroPrint Cloud Web Portal where you can manage and access all your printers and settings. Second, there is a software called AstroBox that you can install on a Raspberry Pi to connect that to your printer. But you can alternatively connect AstroPrint to OctoPrint, which is what we are going to do in this video. To get started, you first need to create an account with AstroPrint on their website. You can do that by clicking Start using AstroPrint here in the upper right corner. I've also put a link in the description of this video. There you select the basic free plan, which as I said will include connections to two 3D printers. If you look at the premium plan, the only difference there is that you can have up to five printers included and a few more features, but in my opinion, most of us won't need that. So after the initial step of entering your email and a password, you will be asked if you want to connect to an AstroBox, which we don't because we already have OctoPrint, so we can select I already have it. Now let's head over to OctoPrint to prepare that to be connected to AstroPrint. Let's open the settings page and then click on the plugin manager option. Then if you don't already have the AstroPrint Cloud plugin, click on get more. Enter AstroPrint in the search field. The AstroPrint plugin should show now. Then click the install button and wait for the installation to finish. At the end you will get a prompt to restart the server, so please do that. Now you should have a new AstroPrint tab in the main view that you can open. Here you will be asked for an access key to enable the connection to AstroPrint Cloud. You will find that access key in your AstroPrint account settings that you can reach when clicking on your email address here in the upper right corner and then click on account settings. Here we have the access key, just click on that. It should be copied to the clipboard automatically, but if this doesn't work, just right click and copy the access key. Next, paste this access key into the corresponding field in the AstroPrint tab in OctoPrint and click the Link AstroPrint Account button. Then confirm the next prompt, which will give your OctoPrint instance access to your AstroPrint account. Then we should get some confirmation that this was successful and we can also check this in the AstroPrint tab. So here we can already see that the connection works and we can see some sample STL files that are part of my AstroPrint account. Let's also give this printer a meaningful name for AstroPrint Cloud because this is basically just the name of the Raspberry Pi in my network, but I want to call it Ender 3. Now let's have an overview what we can do on the AstroPrint portal. First, let's have a look at the Monitor app. Here you can see that I currently have two printers connected to AstroPrint. One is currently printing, that's the Anit A8, and the Ender 3, which we just added, is idle. So let's start a print on the Ender 3 using AstroPrint. You can upload an SDL file that you already have on a computer and print it. For that, I'm heading over to the design library. Here I click the Upload Files button. I select the file I'd like to upload, then click Open. A few seconds later, the file appears in the list. Now, if you click on the name, you will get a little preview here on the right-hand side. On the left, there would be so-called print files if they had already been created. That's actually the G-code files that will be sent to the printer because the STL can, of course, not be printed directly. So let's try to print this file and see what happens and you will see how to get further. We need to print a profile and because I've not created one, I'm creating one for the Ender 3. And because the Ender 3 has well-known parameters and is listed here, 
I don't have to enter anything additional. But if you want to create a custom profile for a printer not listed here, you can also create it. And that page shows you that you can set basically anything that you want for your printer in terms of dimensions, number of extruders and much more. But also what kind of print file format you need and even what slicer software Astroprint should use to slice your STL files, which is pretty amazing because in theory you wouldn't need to have Cura or Slicer installed on your computer anymore, because it's just right here in the cloud. But let's keep it simple, I will stay with the default profile for the NF3 for now. So the next step is to create a material profile. That's basically the same as in other slicer programs when you want to keep your material settings separate from your printing profiles, which I definitely prefer. I'm personally even creating separate material profiles for each filament brand that I'm using, but you could also go with the default PLA profile. It's probably going to work quite well. On the other hand, in Cura there is a bit more flexibility compared to Astroprint when it comes to material specific settings like retraction or fan speed. So if you look at what you can set in material profile in Astroprint, it's actually much less information, just the extruder and bat temperature. But once we would look into the advanced slicer settings, which I'll do later, we'll find these settings. Let's just say we want to print this using the default PLA settings. Actually, I don't think we will need additional platform adhesion like a brim or whatever this setting will create, so let's just print this. We see that it's now slicing the SDL file into G-code, and once it's done, you can finally either select to queue it, which is a premium feature, so I don't select that now, and print now, which is the thing we want to do. And here we finally have to select which printer we actually want to send this to, so I have to select the printer manually. There seems to be some kind of matching feature, but I actually didn't find a way how to make my Octoprint based connection report to Astroprint as a specific printer model, besides just giving it a meaningful name. So I select the printer and Astroprint is now sending the G-code file over to my Octoprint instance. Finally we can monitor the print, so let's have a look how this works. So here in the monitor view you can see what's currently happening at the printer. You can also get screenshots of the webcam by clicking here, so everything looks fine, the build plate is clear. The printer is heating up and should be starting in a few minutes. If we look over to Octoprint we can see the same happening here, it started to heat up and that's the file going to be printed. Now the nice thing is really you can always control the process both from the Octoprint website and Astroprint even at the same time. You can also start a print with Octoprint first, for example if you still want to use Cura or your favorite slicer on your local computer and then just monitor your prints from Astroprint. Now let's explore more of the features you will find in Astroprint because it's way more than we've just seen. When a print is running you can record a video of your print. Just click on this little icon here next to the camera screenshot and then select how often it should take an image. For example at each layer change or each minute. Later you will find these in the Print Captures app where you can re-watch them, download or share them on social media or even directly upload to YouTube. The Print History app will show you what you printed when and also giving you the opportunity to print something from the past again. Useful information for future prints could be how long the print took and how much material was consumed, especially if you run a little print farm and do jobs for customers. Also a nice little thing, you can add notes about a print, maybe if you think that something went particularly well or bad or who this was printed for. If you remember how we started our first print, there was actually no build plate where we did position our part. Well, there's actually a build plate app similar to what you might be used to from Cura, for example. Placement of parts is something you probably want to take more control of if the part needs a special orientation when it's printed. Also printing multiple parts at once requires you to line those parts on the build plate. And for things like scaling or moving, it works very similar. A really unique feature is the cut feature, which will allow you to split parts that are too large for the build plate, so you can print them in multiple runs, it even closes holes created by the cut automatically. However, you will have to remember the settings that you used to make the cut because it doesn't allow you to save the parts that you didn't print for later. For checking the details of a G-code file there is a new G-code viewer available, which is pretty neat. 
Here we can check how the layers were print, for example. When we did our first print, we also kind of left everything on default regarding your print settings. So let's check how we can customize the slicer settings to our needs. There's an app called My Slicer Settings where you can customize basically everything that you might know already from your slicer software. And to start, you have to select first a printer and second a material. This also means that slicer profiles are printer and material specific, which makes sense and saves you from mixing up different settings for different printers and materials by accident. You can customize, for example, the layer height settings or what speed settings you wanna use. And since retraction settings cannot be set at the filament level, this is the right place to customize this setting. Now I'm not saying that this is necessary all the time. You can get along with the default settings for PLA quite well, but if you intend to print something advanced like PETG or ABS, you will find that every printer and every material behaves different and you need to tweak those settings for best results. A useful integration is also the Thingiverse app, which you can use to browse Thingiverse for designs and from there you can directly choose to print something. Unfortunately, you cannot get access to your personal collections that you might have created in Thingiverse already, but for quickly searching and printing something, this is good enough. For my mini factory, this works quite similar. I also want to show you the mobile app. I've put the App Store links in the description as well. Simply download the app and then log in with your Astroprint credentials. Here you can, for example, use the design library for starting or stopping a print and monitoring your prints. And a few more things. And you can also use the Thingiverse integration to quickly start a print from there. So overall, I think it's a great package. There is actually 3D design apps in the portal that you might want to try out, like Leopoli or 3D Slash. I hope this video helps you get started with Astroprint successfully. Please tell me what you think in the comment section. If you like this video, please do me a favor. I appreciate if you hit the like button or subscribe to my channel, but the real way how you can support me is go watch some of my other videos that I've linked for you in these two cards here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.